Hi, bonjour everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to present uh, Beyond Traditional Frameworks, um, AI-driven uh, front-end development. So my name is Ruby Jane Cabano. I'm pronouncing it in a French way. Um, so I'm a front-end developer uh, based in Oslo, Norway. Um, I'm excited to to talk about this uh, uh, this topic because uh, we all know that AI has been uh, has been exploding in the last few years. So, and I think that it is almost a given that AI is a game changer when it comes to software development, right? And and in the front end world, uh, is no exception. And with tools, um, with AI tools and technology, uh, we have been able to create better apps um, faster, right? But um, first, uh, here's the simplest uh, explanation or definition I could find about AI. So, so AI or inter artificial intelligence is the simulation of human intelligence in machines that are programmed to think and learn like humans. So in other words, um, AI refers to machines and um, programs that, are, that perform tasks that we uh, normally associate with um, human intelligence, such as uh, language recognition, image recognition, translation, and pattern recognition. So um, what is the evolution of AI in software development? So, Traditionally, um, AI has been a powerhouse in back-end processes. So it, this is what includes um, handling data analysis, automation, and machine learning. So, and over the years, we've seen um, significant milestones, actually, in the de development of deep learning, such as in the TensorFlow and PyTorch. So now, AI's capabilities um, are exciting to the front end. Um, so accelerating web development, um, using and like enhancing user interfaces and experiences in remarkable ways. But traditional in traditional frameworks, um, so let's say in the web development, uh, like React, uh, the uh, traditional front end frameworks like React, Angular, and you know Vue and all these uh, front end frameworks, um, they provide a structured approach to building user interfaces, right? So these frameworks typically uh, offer predefined components. It's like building um, predefined components or your state management and routing mechanisms when you build applications, right? So developers typically follow these uh, established patterns and best practices to create responsive, um, interactive um, web applications. But um, how is AI accelerating front-end development right now? So, but uh, like, so AI-driven uh, approaches go beyond these traditional frameworks by leveraging machine learning, natural language processing, and other AI uh, techniques. So, like I said, how AI is impacting front-end development. So these are the more or less the the areas that's being uh, impacted by the uh, AI. So in the automate code generation. So these are AI models that can generate code snippets, uh, UI components, and layouts based on designed uh, mockups or other user requirements. And then in predictive UI, so you can see, like say, AI can analyze user behavior. Um, predict uh, their next actions, allowing for dynamic um, UI adaptations. And then also in the personalization, so these they are tools that are AI-driven recommendations that can tailor content and features to individual users. And of course, accessibility. accessibility. Um, so these are AI, in this sense, AI can improve um, accessibility by suggesting alternative text uh, for images, uh, optimizing color contrast, and enhancing keyboard navigation. And in also in the performance optimization, so there are AI algorithms that can optimize front-end performance by minimizing um, uh, resource usage and improving load times. 
and in, of course, in the language, um, natural language interfaces. So uh, there are chatbots or AI-powered chatbots and voice assistants that enable natural interactions with, with app web applications. And lastly, in the design assistants. So, so there, are, there are many AI tools right now that can help designers um, create visually compelling layouts and design improvements. So what are these tools? Or uh, these are some of the tools that AI-driven design tools have, you know, I've come across. And of course, there's a lot. Um, so that can automate and speed up the design process of your uh, development. So for example, uh, UI Zard or Anima and Figma. So these are some AI-driven testing uh, design tools that are game changers because uh, they automate uh, basically repetitive, repetitive tasks and, like, and they also su uh, suggest smart layouts and enhanced images. And of course, if you're a front-end developer or designer, uh, being able to create a uh, good-looking prototype or mock-up in minutes will save you a lot of time. So for example, this one, uh, UI Zard. Uh, so, so UI Zard can create basically markups and prototypes for your web apps in minutes. So, and then you, can, you don't need to exactly design experience to use it. So basically, just to get started with UI Zard, you begin by signing up and logging to the UI Zard platform. And then you can start a new project by uploading new sketches or wireframes. It takes a while or by using the built-in design um, tools to create your initial concepts. Um, so basically, you can also drag, drag and drop UI components, such as buttons, text fields, images, and containers from the toolbar into your canvas. Um, so it can then uh, basically turn, let me just forward it, uh, can then low, uh, turn low fidelity uh, wireframes sketches into fully functional and high fidelity prototypes with a click of a button. So, so basically, once your design is complete, you can click on the export button and then choose the desired framework or language of your code. For example, uh, if you choose uh, React, Vue, Plotter, HTML, CSS, or whatever, then uh, basically, uh, USR will generate the code for your design. But of course, you have to review your code and make necessary adjustments directly within the platform. So another similar uh, tool that I've been using is Anima. So it's, an, it's an also basically the same concept with uh, Usard. So it's an AI design code uh, designed to code to code that uh, a design to code that uh, automatically generates code from designs that you upload. So of course, uh, like what I said, you should always thoroughly test uh, and tweak the code it generates before you deploy it. Um, it's still, uh, like what I said, it's still much faster than writing code for each UI element from scratch, right? So and that's why these tools are so useful in front-end development right now. Uh, of course, another popular design is uh, design tool is Figma. So Figma's AI capabilities take collaboration um, and design to the next level. So it has AI-driven auto layout, uh, also adjustments and smart design uh, suggestions. Of course, uh, an AI-driven code generation. In there's a GitHub survey actually that says that 92% of software engineers are already using AI coding assistance. And yeah. Um, and of course, there's a good reason why uh, they're using AI coding assistance. For for example, in the can really speed up your tasks like in code refactoring, refactoring, code generation, and writing co the code the documentation. So, um, of course, all of these tools have free version of tri free trial uh, available. So you should always just try them and see which one fits your uh, workflow. Uh, of course, personally, I use uh, GitHub Copilot. So, uh, yeah. And of course, uh, lately, I've also been hearing a lot about uh, there's a new tool called Codium. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's also uh, been I've been you know hearing a lot of good things about it also. But how do these tools work? So, and which tools should you use? Um, so basically, they work by uh, turning. Uh, 
or uh, natural language prompts into coding suggestions and offering intelligent code uh, completion. So basically, like what I said, they help you uh, automate re repetitive tasks and work more efficiently. And of course, you can easily add, integrate into your IDE and the AI suggestions in the, uh, are based on the context and the style conventions of your code. So, yeah, of course. Uh, who else are using GitHub Pilot Copilot right now? I'm sure. Oh, I'm surprised, not, not, not a lot. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so as you write Copilot, we'll suggest completions, um, entire functions, and even com comments to enhance your code. So you can accept, reject, or modify these suggestions uh, according to your needs or to suit your needs. And then, of course, this Amazon Code Whisperer is also a powerful tool uh, from the AI-driven AI code generation. So it's the same concept also with the GitHub uh, Copilot. So you can also, uh, also suggest entire functions based on the context of your project. So basically, to get the most out of it, um, uh, you customize the settings to match your coding style and project requirements. And like what I said, in the uh, in one of the impacts of the AI uh, tools is in the personalization. So tools like Amazon Personalize uh, provide real-time recommendations. So um, actually, this is perfect when you have a personalized marketing mark campaigns on user-specific content suggestions. So yeah, if you have your website, that requires that. Um, so this is uh, Amazon's own recommendation uh, sent system. So. It's a great option, actually, if you're building an e-commerce uh, website or web app to give you serious, uh, highly accurate and recommendations for products, uh, content, and etc. So um, basically, you can easily um, connect AI personalization models with your web app's uh, front end. Um, and since they're easily integrated into the app's uh, back end, you, all you need is an API, to, so it can easily, uh, easily communicate with the front end. And this is how to get started with the Amazon Personalize. I think I'm running out of time, so I have to hurry. Um, and of course, they have these AI and chatbots and virtual assistants. So uh, one of the most uh, uh, well-used now is a dialogue for Google Dialogue Flow. So here, basically, I'm just showing showcasing integration of AI-powered uh, chat, uh, chatbot using Dialogue Flow. Uh, it's a natural language processing platform. So the code. Initiate a session uh, with dialogue flow, um, sends a user query, and then receives a response uh, with uh, detected intent and, con and context. So highlighting the seamless uh, interaction between the users and AI-driven features. And of course, it also this has uh, AI-enhanced accessibility and testing. So. There are tools like uh, Microsoft Seeing AI, Accessible B, and Testim. So uh, these are perfect for visually impaired users, so while accessibility offers AI-driven solutions to uh, ensuring websites comply with accessibility standards. So basically, these tools uh, promote um, in inclusive inclusivity and enhance the user experience for all users. So. Um, Oh, it's okay. I'm running out of time. So this is an example of the test team. The, so uh, this is AI to speed up your web test creation, um, uh, execution, and then maintenance. So it also auto-generates uh, tasks, you reduce, so basically reducing your work. And of course, Google Lighthouse. Uh, this is performance optimization with AI. So. Um, there's been a lot of, uh, uh, especially in the front end, uh, about uh, Google Lighthouse in terms of, uh, because it's a, it's a way to assess your website performance, accessibility, and SEO best practices. So uh, it provides practic practically, uh, practical recommendations to boost your website uh, speed and enhance your user experience. So. Basically, you just run your lighthouse in your application, so and then you can identify your the bottlenecks, accessibility issues, and SEO improvements. So, 
the future prospects of AI in front end development. So I believe these are some of the, those. Uh, looking ahead, we are exciting prospects for AI in front end development, such as AI driven AR, or VR experiences, and voice controlled interfaces. So there are innovations like real time AI feedback. Um, in, let's say, autonomous and user interface adjustments that are, uh, that are on the horizon. So challenges and considerations, of course. We're always going to be like that. So, um, well, it, it poses challenges in terms of data quality and data privacy, actually. So AI models uh, require high quality training data and ethical concerns like data privacy and bias in AI. Of course, in AI algorithms, uh, need careful consideration, right? Um, and of course, learning curve. Uh, let's take into account into the, the learning curve for us developers. So we need to learn how to integrate AI properly into our applications. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, basically, and then balancing automation and when uh, when to use uh, AI generated code and then versus manual coding. Of course, and continuous learning and rapid and to keep up with the rapid advancements. Uh, okay, to wrap this up, uh, I just want to share this uh, post from the from the uh, from the X or Twitter that I saw. So I just want to share. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, but I think whatever we feel about AI, whether it's taking over work or helping us in our you know in our <laughs> development, AI-driven tools will continue to change our lives. So yeah. Thank you, Mercy, Neil Mercy. <laughs> well, we, well, we have time for one question, if someone has one. No, no question, thank you. Mm -hmm.